What makes a really good character creator? I spent a good three months trying to answer that. Here's what I came up with. Originally, this video was gonna be focused on a different feature, but then this happened. Surprise, motherfucker! If you haven't heard by now, MetaHumans is Epic Games' new tool that lets you create hyper-realistic characters. I've been wanting to create a character creator for a long time now, and as soon as I saw MetaHumans, I knew it was time. So let's jump into MetaHumans and have a look. Starting up MetaHumans makes me feel like a kid in a candy store. There's a lot to play around with. I mean, you can even tweak how dirty the teeth are. You want freckles? How about some clown makeup? And the way you can just sculpt the face is so... So... <laughs> yeah, so it turns out manipulating faces in metahumans is less than ideal. You start by mixing existing faces together and then you get to drag parts of the face around but every time you drag one part of the face, other parts change as well. Now, why would they do this? I did a bit of digging and here's what I learned. MetaHumans was built by creating a large database of scanned faces. When you change a facial feature, it looks at the database and samples the face that best matches the desired shape. This is to ensure that no matter how you push and pull the face around, the resulting face is kept within real life limits. I don't know what that process was in picking people for the scanned data, but it's very hard to make someone that's not super photogenic. If they're really going to constrain users to real life measurements, they should probably have a lot more range in the people they scan. At least give the option to turn this constraint off. The faces I can make in MetaHumans are far too safe and restricted. And it's also an offline tool not meant for creating characters inside a game. Luckily though, we can export MetaHumans into Maya. And that gives us what, Tim? Unlimited power! This is where I spent a solid week trying to understand how metahumans are constructed. When you first open a metahuman in Maya, you will only see controls for the face but nothing for the body. Epic does provide a very capable tool for generating controls for the body, but I have something else in mind. I've been slowly working on a Maya tool of my own for the past six years. It functions as a character browser and has a bunch of tools for rigging and animation in Maya. If I use Epic's body controls, I won't be able to use my animation tools to its fullest. So here I generate the body controls using my own automated tools. not quite done yet. To enable players to change facial features in a character creator, we're going to need something called blend shapes, also called morph targets. These are copies of the original character, each of which has been modified in isolated areas. The original character then blends all of these modified copies together, letting the user decide the strength of each shape. The result is a face that can morph into unique faces. As you can see though, for a compelling character creator, we're gonna need a lot of plane shapes. To get things working as fast as possible, I've been moving things around in Maya directly. To get the best results, however, you would work in something like ZBrush that is specifically made for modeling and then carefully study how the human face works. We're finally ready to export everything out of Maya, but before we launch Unreal, we need to think about how we want to approach the character creator. I've always despised having 5 million sliders and even worse when a slider changes other sliders. This is very counterintuitive to me. I'd rather I rather feel like I'm playing with a toy by pulling the face around. During my research, I played around with the Sims 4 character creator, which is seen by many to be the best character creator out there. It's actually pretty similar to what I had in mind. Moving forward, I will keep Sims 4 in mind, especially in the first step, which is dragging the face around like Play-Doh. 
To do this, we're gonna need a bunch of cubes to define the areas that can be dragged. Hovering the mouse over one of the cube highlights the corresponding area. You can then move those areas by left click dragging in three different axes and you can scale those areas with middle click, also in three different axes. Right click will let you colorize the highlighted area so each area can be manipulated in six different ways. And each way is a blend shape that gets blended with the default character model. One issue of editing characters by dragging things around is the inability to control one blend shape at a time, like traditional sliders allow you to do. To alleviate this problem, I added two hotkey modifiers. If you hold shift down, you will only manipulate the vertical blend shape. Holding control down will only manipulate the horizontal blend shape. While holding down these modifiers, a slider is displayed to show you exactly what you're editing as well as a percentage. quickly add some interface to pick skin texture and shine. I won't be focusing on the interface for this video, so it's going to look rough for now. Let's add a new tab so we can pick hair and beard. Picking hair color is split into darkness, redness and white hairs. This is reflecting how metahumans have set up their material and I'd like to change it to a simple color picker later on. Technically we already have a basic yet functional character creator. The thing is, the same system is going to be used to generate NPCs and I'd like the NPCs to be memorable and full of personality. At the moment you can certainly shape a wide range of faces, but they all have this dead stare. A lot of personality comes from facial expressions, so let's add the ability to play with that. Let's put facial expressions in a new tab. Eventually I would like expressions to be editable also by clicking directly on the face but for now sliders will have to do. Expressions will not be using blend shape and instead use skeletal joints that control different areas on the face. Expressions really add a lot to the character creator and I often wonder why I haven't seen this in a lot more games. The last thing I added is character posture. This also gives a lot of personality and was relatively easy to implement. As you can see, there are still some kinks to fix regarding posture. To showcase the final result, here are some randomized characters. That's it for this video, see you in the next one.